right, Jason, run it back here in the J Concepts Garage. Another vlog episode again with uh, Tyler Hooks. And uh, Tyler, uh, we had a little string of events that we just got back from. And, uh, you know, we, we kind of built up to this. Uh, first of all, Rich drove up to uh, Missouri, J Concepts van, and uh, we attended the, the Bigfoot Open House. Uh, you went over to uh, one of our favorite tracks there in Omaha and hit up the, um, you know, what's really the summer indoor gnats now. Mm -hmm. uh, so first of all, let's talk to you about the, the summer indoor gnats there at, uh, you know, the track that Alex Sturgeon manages there. You did a walkthrough. Uh, you did a little tour of the facility. Uh, you've been there. You raced there. You did pretty well. Um, talk to us about the experience there with the, with the crew. Yeah, so this was my first time headed up to the Hobbyplex in a couple of years and first time being there with Jake Concepts, and uh, we had an awesome time. Um, Alex and his crew, as always, they do a, a fantastic job. The layout was super fun. Um, this year we were able to run slicks from the start, so uh, they had blowers out there, and you just blew off your portion of the track each run, and the track stayed uh, relatively consistent and smooth. The only time we had any sort of little hiccup was it rained one night and then the track was a little slimy the next morning. But other than that, it was, it was pretty perfect. Um, the racing was really good. Our turnout was, was awesome. We had, uh, I want to say a little over 280 entries. So, um, for the INS series, that's pretty, pretty great. And, uh, yeah, had, uh, had some luck myself, had some good results, but, uh, overall it was, it was nice to just see everybody have a good time and, uh, the guys race really hard. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, we, we have a kind of a select amount of tracks that are that are on dirt. Uh, we're running, you know, either a kind of a prepared surface to run slicks or you got tracks like Hobby Town there who can get the surface right without really adding anything and they get that, that kind, of, kind of grip. But right now that's kind of the track that we're seeing the largest turnouts at for our dirt races is where uh, the racers know what to expect, I think, is number one. And I think that's one of the reasons they, they choose that location to go to. But the other is, I really think that there's something to the track size uh, that really kind of comes back to people. And they, they really enjoy running that little larger 10 scale track. Yeah, if you've never been there, um, the first time on the track will throw you off a little bit. Because um, the track slopes downward, which is the opposite of pretty much every RC track. And the driver stands really tall. Uh, so once you get used to it, it's actually awesome because you're just so high up and you can see everything. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a little wonky. It's almost like the opposite of OCRC back in the day where you were OCRC, you were right on top of the track and you were really low. Um, so it, it felt like your vantage point was at an awkward angle. And this is almost the, you know, the complete opposite of that. But it ends up being really neat once you get used to it. And then like you said, it is a big track. So, you know, in the winter they run eight scale there no problem so um it's definitely one of the larger ones and, and they use all of the floor space that they have for for our race which is appreciated so you know what we did with this event is like we did there at hoosier um you know last year is we ran a, a round of qualifying on friday and this is kind of a little tweak to the schedule that we did that you know pretty much all the racers were there either late thursday early friday for sure we decided instead of having that seating round we kind of like predetermined the heats a little bit, set them up so they were a little bit sorted uh, by where we kind of know the drivers are going to be. And then we just went ahead and ran a round of qualifying on Friday. And it seems like it, it takes a little bit of pressure off uh, that Saturday, kind of gets you a run under your belt and then gets the racers sort of a, overnight to kind of think about what they did uh, well or they didn't do well. And then kind of gets you back out there for two rounds of qualifying and maybe a little bit more of a relaxed second day. I mean, you know, one of the things that we've talked about wanting the INS, the NCTS series to, to do is to be an experience for these people. You know, they're, you're spending a lot of money to go somewhere and we want you to have a, a good time while you're there. And, you know, part of that is being able to get out at a pretty decent time so that you and all your buddies or um, any new people that you met at the track can go get dinner. Um, you can have some drinks if you want to, or you can, there were guys that went and played top golf or something like that. So that's that's part of that experience too. As much as the racing is, is is having a good time. So this, like you said, alleviates that Saturday, and it also makes it to where, depending on how you set it up, you really get out on Friday at a good time too. So we were out by I want to say eight o'clock on Friday, and, and about the same on Saturday. Everybody was able to get dinner. Um, we get went. Everybody went and got wings Saturday night at a 
local place and had a good time. So uh, yeah, it was it was awesome. So going into the racing, um, obviously we had some guys get off to a hot start like Dustin Evans. He seemed like, I mean, when I was you know, chatting with you, of course, was, I was at a different event, but chatted with you a little bit. I was paying attention online and it seemed like he kind of like just kind of adapted really quickly to that track. He got off to a hot start, especially in two wheel. And, uh, talk to us about uh, kind of how four wheel went and then, you know, some of the other classes that you were in. Yeah. So it, it seems to me like a lot of these guys are, are it in a weird way, they've, they've been to hobby action a couple times. Everybody's kind of getting ready for the worlds and the more places that they go to, it's like, they're kind of starting with that tentative world starting setup to try to see how it works and everything. And, and Dustin was really happy with that direction that he was going, started off really hot, um, was able to grab a couple of TQs. Um, you know, somebody like Brock started off a little bit slower, um, but was ultimately able to kind of get going. And, and he and Cavallari um, admittedly were working together to try to get things going in the right direction. And both of them were finding more pace as, as the race was going on. And then um, Aiden Horn was was super fast in both classes, as well as uh, Tom and guys like Matty G. Um, so the, everybody was kind of firing at, at different times. Um but the consistent players in qualifying were definitely, you know, Dustin, Aiden, and then Brock later on in qualifying. Um, and then for the stock classes uh, like that I, that I was running, um, I had a really tough day in, in two-wheel drive. Just couldn't really get going in the right direction. Um, but, you know, the, the guy who really kind of swept the whole event in stock was Doug LeRiviere. He, he didn't really put a foot wrong the entire weekend. Just kind of smoked everybody in both classes. Um and then kind of, you know, left the rest of us um, kind of just trying to fight for the rest of the podium spots. So you had uh, guys like Mason Templeman um, and, oh, I'm struggling with names. Nate Sutherland was another one who was yeah. battling it out in both classes. And so going into Sunday for me, I was able to start fourth on the grid in four-wheel drive and kind of just be slow and steady and not make any mistakes and get up to the two spot in that class. Um and I believe Nate got third. Um, and then in the in the two-wheel drive class, those last two positions were Nate and Mason uh, battling it out. So they had some some pretty incredible battles. And then uh, uh, it was either, the, I believe it was the stock guys, we actually marshaled the stadium truck race, which was probably one of the best races of the weekend. Um, Owen Vanderbeek ended up taking the win. Um, Emerson Sturgeon, Alex's son, he was up there battling and had some unfortunate issues. And on the last lap, there was just total carnage. And the top six guys were all just running into each other. And it was pretty crazy. So that one was cool. And then um, uh, Mason Templeman grabbed the win in the short course class. And yeah, um, going into the modified classes, uh, Dustin had a little bit of trouble kind of trying to convert that TQ position into the win. Um, but we had, you know, Brock take a uh, two-wheel drive and then ultimately Aiden took the four-wheel drive class so we had some really good racing um, it went down to the a3s in a lot of classes um, and it was just exciting yeah I think you know looking at back at the photos you know that you guys shot after the race I want to say that you know J concepts we won you know I think it was six or seven classes something like that so I was really proud of the guys obviously Doug took his two then we had um, you know Owen who I mean they have the Vanderbeeks have a pretty good uh bullpen there oh, yeah. of, of drivers you know between you know uh, mac the dad then you got alex and now you got uh, owen and um you know they they got some great drivers they're getting that experience and and uh you know they've all had a little bit of success but now you can kind of see owen kind of creeping into um you know i know the last time i saw him he's like starting to talk to me more and you know kind of giving me a bunch of stuff about hey i'm gonna beat you if you race and you know <laughs> and, and uh, now i believe it you know watching the 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 13.5 truck so that's that's cool to see you know we have some emerging drivers out there you know we had a few years ago we had uh, some dominant drivers like Matty G and you know Davey Bata and uh, you know many guys in stock that you know they kind of bumped into mod they're kind of doing the you know modified classes now gonna be in the worlds you know now we have kind of a new little generation uh, you know that we can you know talk about um, you know later but you know we have a new generation of stock drivers and and uh, people just getting in there and trying to get those top threes. Yeah, everybody's there. All the guys are fighting really hard. Uh, definitely had a little bit of, you know, quarreling or quabbling on the driver's stand, which is pretty normal stuff. So, yeah, it's, it's weird for me. You know, at 26, I'm like the second oldest guy on the driver's stand. So I probably should, 
should move on. But um, yeah, it's it's fun. It's it's really cool to see these different kids, you know, take steps forward and and kind of get going in the right direction, which is which is pretty neat. And also, you know, kind of why this series is so cool is is not only do you have that happening in stock, but you also have it happening in mod where the local guys have an opportunity to kind of showcase their stuff against you know the nation's best and see what they can do and, and every once in a while you get those runs in where they kind of put it on the the guys and, and make them pay attention well what i'm seeing is a lot of the drivers that have come through our series and just looking at it from an outside uh, view at times is we have a lot of drivers that run in our series that are going to be in the worlds mm -hmm. and uh, you know we got a worlds this year in the usa i'd say there's <clears throat> i mean probably more um american drivers and j concepts drivers at, at that going to be in that event than we've ever had before and a lot of them are drivers that have come through our series either participated in mod or did so well in you know 17.5 13.5 yeah it's it's mm -hmm. definitely going to be a pretty extensive list and and we're si excited but obviously like kind of what you're thinking is it's it's definitely a daunting task just to have that many people um, but it's going to be pretty cool and and it'll be a unique race yeah, so, you know, looking over, you know, where we were at, we were at the Bigfoot Open House, and this was the debut weekend where, you know, we're going to do a whole separate video with Fred talking about Bigfoot 4, <clears throat> the, the restoration here of his uh, of his truck. But, you know, we fr finally got the opportunity to, to see this thing put together. You know, they tired it up there at the shop. Uh, Rich did a lot of uh, videos, a lot of photos uh, of kind of what was happening and, and the whole operation getting this truck there. And uh, getting the debut, they went ahead and they lined up Bigfoot 1, 4, and 8 uh, there out front of their shop. And that was a big moment, you know, for Fred and, and their team that kind of worked on this thing the whole time. Uh, you know, and that was just a part of, of the event. You know, we had the day before, we, we had a, uh, you know, over at the hotel, we had our little uh, bash at the hotel parking lot where, uh, you know, we got Adam Rogers and Terry Heimel and these guys that, um, wanted to just kind of set up at the parking lot and just drive RC cars. And it really kind of turned into, I think, what just what everybody wanted was just kind of a get-together. Uh, you know, we set up out there, but, you know, they had some jumps and they had some hills and cars to, to, to crush and to do some sled pulling. And there's a little bit of everything out there. And I mean, we had models out there. We had green light collectibles. We had RC cars. We had pretty much anything that you could probably put in your car and take to the event you it was out there on display so that was really neat we had a lot of fun out there i got to work out a couple bugs with the new speed controls i put in the retros and then got out there the next day in the racing uh, we had the trigger king race there of course uh, we got the the tent set up there and this um, was the trigger king race this was on the property for the bigfoot um, open house right yeah so they're at their property they set up a, a a certain area where they have the RC race and they make it part of their calendar each year the Trigger King group uh, that they have an event there and you know we signed up one truck in retro had one truck in pro mod I didn't do the sport mod this year uh, just to kind of give us some more time to run around and video things and get some different shots and uh, of course Rich was running all over doing video and photos too so there's a lot to do in a day I mean I was lucky enough I got the win with the the retro truck in that class and I got the win in the pro mod uh, with the uh, the Bigfoot racer and uh, yeah it was kind of a it was a fun day um, got a little fortunate we did I had to do a rerun on one of our uh, semi-finals uh, with the the light they they uh, kind of turned the green light on a little early they decided uh, Garrett won the race they decided to rerun the race which I won went to the finals and then I was able to win in the finals but um, you know you saw we were I was here um, doing a lot of work you were joking that i was working more on these cars than i have on any of my 10 scale buggies which is probably true but <laughs> if you're going to get that um if you're going to get them working especially if you haven't been running them lately you got to make sure that everything's right yeah and uh you talked a little bit about you you had a mishap in qualifying too and so you actually you had to do some wrenching on the spot there as well yeah it was a good thing we had uh you know many people rich and chris Parrish and Josh Rhodes and, you know, Doug um, Welker and these guys who were giving us, um, you know, kind of looking in, see how I was doing, working on the truck. Um, you know, in the qualifying pass, we went off the track, you know, off the side of a jump and 
went kind of crazy. It's the first time I've ever bro really broke one of these trucks, but I broke a shock in, which actually was an associated shock in. So, you know, that put that back on there. The sway bar flipped backwards and bent, and there was all kinds of little problems and uh, kind of got some help and uh, got some work done and um, fixed it up and ended up getting the win. But it needs a little rebuild now. <laughs> it's, got a, it's got a couple uh, bent parts, but that truck's been really solid uh, ever since, you know, Fred and I built... Uh, well, both of these trucks over time, uh, that thing's always been really solid, really easy, having the one Reedy speed control and motor, I always kind of know what to do, it always feels good in the radio, uh, this truck we just installed, in, you know, a new speed control, we talked about that, uh, that was a recommendation from Morris Ashkenos, he said they, they made a new um, version 2 speed control hobby wing for the brushed motors and, and uh, had some different functions for reverse, and brakes, which uh, once I figured that out, that was like a, a two day project getting that to <laughs> getting that to work. But once I figured it out, uh, works well. And uh, of course, we're running the sil silent speed, twenty seven turns in this thing with the uh, trigger can only let you put the thirteen tooth pinions. Uh, we talked about that. Uh, you had your truck geared up when you ran oh, yeah. your race earlier in the year because it was open. But here we had to gear back down. We had to put all the weight on the truck put all the brass that we that we have available so um yeah you're asking me when we're wrenching you're like what are you doing with all this weight and yeah it was like know, it looked like a pound of weight yeah we uh, weighed in and as uh it was 9.6 pounds uh this this uh this truck i mean that truck probably is eight i don't know but this thing is a tank but it drives really nice on the track it was a lot of fun with the the blue compound uh golden years uh, we ran the blue compound renegades on that one and and the slam text, the the uh, the white hard inserts. Uh, but once you get them in the tire, it's a little bit of a project, <laughs> but they work really well and they're super lightweight. That's kind of my first time actually. I think mounting them and gluing them. I think Fred did our original ones, what I ran last year. But uh, it was a good event. Um, and then kind of the finale there. Rebecca did a, a car crush with Bigfoot out there. It's just kind of an open freestyle. And then Eric uh, Steinberg, he did a, a crush with the Gunkster, uh, all green, um, you know, crazy looking truck. And then we had our final with Jim Kramer doing his last ride. Uh, they they kind of publicized this. They kind of used it as an opportunity. Uh, we had some, you know, everybody had some t-shirts. And, um, you know, Jim, after doing this since the early 80s, um, and then getting to drive at 72 years old, um, you know, it's really kind of hard to put it into perspective sometimes. And I wanted him to go nuts with the truck. You know, I'm like, let's just break this thing in half. You know? Right. Let's just go crazy. But he was really nice with the equipment. But you could see that he wasn't intimidated. He wasn't scared. He had a lot of time in these trucks. And even at 72 years young, we'll call it, um, you know, he was able to kind of do a lot of nice jumps. And uh, he pulled the truck in and the body was still uh, fresh and they... They had it auctioned off to a local uh, cause, and the body panel sold. And uh, overall, it was a good event, and uh, just can't wait to do another one. Yeah, it's probably a lot cheaper that way to bring it back all in one piece. Absolutely. I think um, most people didn't know what to expect. You know, you don't know when you set somebody off. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you put Ryan Mayfield in Bigfoot 21, <laughs> it would probably come back in pieces. Um, but, uh, yeah, you get a, a vet out there that maybe has done the work before you thinking, oh, I'll probably take this a little conservative and, yeah. and, uh, bring it back in one piece, which ultimately is what you want. So good weekend, uh, good weekend for Fred and the crew, Bigfoot four. We had a good weekend on the track and, uh, actually, uh, we had another winner, which was Doug Welker. He won the sport mod class. I took some photos and video of him. And then we had Garrett, who came over, who I raced with in Pro Mod. He actually won the freestyle. So his truck's kind of a cool-looking truck, different than the rest. I got some photos of that, which uh, came up pretty well. But, uh, yeah, overall, we had a great uh, a great open house and pack it all back up. And, uh, you know, Rich drove it all back. I flew back. And then uh, we set up again because you had to head out again to do some dirt oval racing um, at a rescheduled race for us. Yeah, our original race was supposed to be in the spring at Auburn RC, and it was looking like it was going to rain pretty hard that weekend. And uh, we didn't want everybody to travel out there and then get, get rained on. Auburn RC is uh, an outdoor facility. 
Um, so Kyle Leighton and his dad, they did a fantastic job with their crew out there. Um, it's a pretty big track uh, for Dirt Oval, and the surface is really incredibly smooth and really high bite. Uh, pretty abrasive surface. Uh, so we headed out there, uh, or I headed out there last Thursday, um, and we started practice Friday morning. We had uh, 140 plus entries out there for um, what was our spring nationals, um, and it was it was awesome. That track was super super fun to drive on. Um, I ran modified sprint car and uh, 13.5 sprint car out there, and uh, I haven't had that much fun driving, especially a dirt oval car, but just RC in general. Um, then on that surface in modified sprint car, you're just going so fast. Uh, the car, you know, pops wheelies and does all sorts of cool stuff. Um, and yeah, we had a, we had a, a bunch of talent out there. Um, some of our own racers and, uh, you know, as well as, as the West coast best oval racers, um, you know, all kind of converging in that area and, and everybody had a really good time. It was, it was cool to see, um, you know, some of our sponsors and supporters of the INS and NCTS uh, series show up and, you know, Amy and Hobbies brought out a, a whole setup and the guys were out there giving stuff away. We had our own stuff to give away. Um, and then Kyle, you know, he sprung to have, um, you know, food out there for everybody and food was awesome. Um, they had a barbecue for the track workers the night before, which was great too. And, and yeah, it was, it was pretty epic. Um, you know, we, we have a project that we've been working on, uh, which is what I ran in Modified Sprint, which is a, a Velocity um, RC VSA offset sprint car, which is a team associated conversion kit. Um, and I kind of wanted to, to showcase for everyone um, all of the different parts that we make, whether they're specifically for team associated cars or just, you know, some of our titanium and aluminum accessories. Um, and I kind of thought the the coolest or the most fun way to do that would be to, to build one of these velocity sprint cars or, you know, in a, an associated base car. Um, and I thought it, I, I, I'm a little bit partial, but I think it came out pretty awesome. Um, we're going to be, we're going to have an article on that car specifically and all the parts that went into it. And, uh, it was really cool to kind of get it finished and, and be able to drive it on the weekend. Um, I didn't really have, you know, per se the result that I wanted in, in modified sprint car with that car, but it drove awesome. I just didn't quite get um, as far into the setup as I probably should have. I was being a little bit stubborn, um, but it, it still, it drove great, was able to make the modified sprint a main with it. Um, and then, you know, congratulations to Justin Moon, who drove a, a fantastic race in modified sprint. I actually pulled over in the middle of the race after popping a wheelie and crashing. Um, it was so hard, like once you made a mistake to be able to get back going again, when everybody's doing, you know, 4.4 second lap times and there's eight cars on the track, it's really hard to pull back out into traffic and not take somebody out. So I parked it for a little while and watched and those guys were absolutely battling it out. He went down to the last lap with Ray Binkowski, um, who was also the winner of the late model class. So Ray had a great weekend as well. Um, our own Jonathan Schultz, he and his dad, John, they had a impressive battle all weekend in the short course modified class. So Jonathan was able to, to take the win with the new swiper tire, um, which we've been pretty excited about. It's a, it's a cool tire. Um, it's got a, a new insert for that tire as well, which has been working out awesome. Um, and then in the other class that I ran, uh, as well as Doug Riviere, we ran the 13.5 sprint class and I was able to, to grab a second place finish, which was, which was pretty good. Um, in that class, it was super simple for, for us. We just ran um, silver smoothies with uh, the RM2 foams front and rear, uh, glued the foam to the wheel, cause just because we had that much grip. And uh, it was pretty straightforward from there on. And uh, congratulations to Matt Sin, who took the win in that class. Um, I think he had a, a lap or two on the rest of us. So there was kind of some carnage behind, but he did the best job of, of managing traffic and honestly having you know, a 10th or two on the rest of us. So he, uh, put in all the hard work and it, it showed on uh, main day there. Um, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a super awesome event. Like I said, Kyle Layton and his crew, they did a great job. Um, can't wait to get back there. If you haven't been there before, it's so neat, uh, driving that fast. Um, it was kind of gnarly, like looking at the temperature on the electronics and stuff and having to kind of monitor that. Cause it was really hot. It was 105 degrees and, uh, yeah, we were really hard on electronics. Um, but yeah, super awesome facility, super neat to drive on, great group of people. So 
couldn't have really gone any better. So um, kind of to kind of go into what's what's next here for us, I mean, we got, I'm personally going to go out to the 1 8th E Nationals uh, here soon and um, talk to us about what's kind of coming up on the calendar. And, you know, uh, obviously we got, like I said, the Roar E Nationals I'm going to. Then we got the Wicked Weekend. Then we got the Roar 110 Scale Nationals. So we're kind of, you know, finishing up the schedule of Roar Nationals for the year. You know, we started off with the Fuel one, but you know, in the carpet, but now we're kind of rolling into the end of them here. And, um, first we got the eight scale ENATS, um, you know, talk to us about what you kind of think you're going to see, or we're going to see out there in terms of the racers and results. Yeah. So you guys are heading up to New York to CRC, uh, raceway for the, the ENATS this weekend. Um, and I'm obviously you're going to see all the same, you know, top guys there kind of battling it out. And, uh, you know, you're, you have that kind of, what is it, you know, northern Pennsylvania, New York, that type of area. So a lot of the locals that are up there, the, the people that are that are showing up um, and kind of, you know, filling the rest of the field. So uh, it's, it's going to be kind of interesting. You know, it's going to be hot, um, which you don't really think of hot when you think of New York, but it is July. Um, and yeah, the, the track's supposed to be pretty cool. Um, obviously, you've got indoor pitting, which is which is kind of nice, and then you know outdoor pit area, all that type of stuff. Uh, we sent a lot of tires up there. Uh, aren't fully sure what to expect. You know, you can have all of the the warm up races that you want to in the world, and then you show up to the to the actual event, and the track does something entirely different. So we don't have a whole lot of experience up there, so we sent a lot of stuff. Tried to be as prepared as possible, and yeah, I think you're going to see some good racing. Wicked Weekend, you're going to be heading out there with Paul Wynn. Uh, obviously, we'll have uh, Hannah out there as well, uh, helping with the coverage. So, one of the better races of the year, you know, Paul uh, seems to like the Wicked Weekend almost better than all the rest of them. And I believe you're 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 almost on the same uh, you know story as Paul. But uh, Wicked Weekend, what are you thinking uh, is going to happen here? What are we looking at with entries? Five, six hundred. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to be the biggest race of you know the may june july period um and yeah i i think myself i like wicked weekend better than than some of the, you know the other race time events i don't know why maybe it's just because the arena is open air so you don't really have that smoky effect um obviously the it's not cold i don't really don't like being cold i know paul doesn't either um so i guess we would kind of take the warm weather but it's going to be interesting for especially for the guys that went to the enats because you have these two outdoor races in the summer back to back and you know not to make everybody sound like a prima donna but you're just going to be kind of run down like uh even you know just the three days that we spent in california that the time that you guys spent at the open house like it just being out in the heat that long you know takes a lot out of you you guys are going to be outside for five days straight at the enats and then wicked weekends another four day event so it'll be interesting to see just on main day how alert um, you know some of those guys are as, as weird as that sounds but yeah it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be one that's going to be difficult too that you're going to have a lot of the same you know factory guys fast guys um, as well as the east coast just brings out this collective of, of racers that are really talented and, and ready to rip at any time um, so yeah we're going to head to the wicked weekend in georgia um, another one where we're having to kind of gear up and take a bunch of stuff with us um, it's you know we're fortunate enough to have a, a big team that's ready to get there and, and do do so as well as we can um so yeah that's that's gonna be the wicked weekend so roar 110 scale nationals uh that's kind of the last one on our list here uh coming up sean harding uh they're at hobby town uh they're you know he's talking about they're starting to get into that building mode of building the track uh he's promising everybody a wicked layout um uh, you know no pun intended going back to the wicked weekend but he's uh I think he's bound and determined to make this kind of memorable uh, based on what I've seen online, his comments, his his kind of the build time. It seems like he's really bound and determined to make this memorable track, uh, you know, has uh, a slightly slim, similar surface to stuff we've used in the past. You know, I know Dustin and a few of our other guys went to the warm up. Uh, they're still believing that they're going to be on the silver compound smoothie twos, but you never know. Yeah, and, and I think one of the, the things that had everybody a little bit apprehensive was that at the warm-up, um, the day ended up being kind of long. They were using a backpack sprayer uh, to try to keep the track wet in between races, and 
um, Sean was trying to assure everybody that they were going to have a misting system. And just knowing how much goes into that, I think everybody was pretty wary that, that it was actually going to happen because it's a lot of work. Um, but I want to say that either yesterday or the day before, there was a, a video posted of the Mr. System up and working, which um, I was you know, pretty impressed and blown away that they're going to do that. But that's going to make the day go by a whole lot quicker and ultimately probably make the track more consistent. So um, I think you know, if that's the biggest thing that people were worried about for that event or for attending that event, it uh, looks like it's been remedied and uh, you know, kudos to them for, for taking that extra initiative to try to you know, really speed the day up and make the track more consistent because it was going to be a, an uphill battle to try to keep water in it if they were going to have to use backpack sprayers. So um, yeah, it should be awesome. Uh, again, we're going to have to take a couple of different options because the, you know, the, the flip side of, of them doing that is that's not what they were doing at the warm up. So uh, who knows if our you know, silver smoothies are going to work, if we're going to need to use you know, blue ellipses or aqua ellipses, we'll, we'll figure it out when we get there. You know, and you know, at a race like this, you know, we're coming up now. This is going to be you know, in August and towards the end of the year. We're kind of gearing up for the worlds and um, this is going to be kind of our last chance to see kind of the heroes uh, of the United States kind of battling before there'll be, you know, a little bit of a soft spot in the calendar and then the world is going to take off. And um, this is the opportunity uh, kind of to get those, those, uh, that confidence going, the last minute tuning, any little things that you want to try, uh, improve. This is probably the time to pull it out. Yeah, and, and, you know, totally different surface going on this week, but we're seeing, you know, the European version of that this week mm -hmm. at the 10-scale at the Euros, and, you know, the results have been really interesting, and it's, you know, it's it's cool to see the guys that come out of the woodworks for the 10-scale worlds that don't normally race, you know, the, the Davide Angaros of the world who just somehow show up with no practice and are, you know, top five fastest, just probably with a car that came directly out of the box, so... Um, it's just, it's neat. It's, we're in that time period that's, you know, for the, there's some of us that are going to, to the worlds to have a good time and, and for the experience, but it's neat to watch the guys that are really trying to go there to prove a point, um, and see how they kind of, you know, like you're talking about how they take these next few months and what they do and, and how they go about it. It's going to be really interesting. Thanks again, Tyler. And, uh, of course, if you like watching these videos, please subscribe to us, like the video. We check out the comments and, uh, you know, keeps us notified of kind of what's going on in the world of RC racing and, and really kind of brings us closer to the racers as they kind of get the opportunity to see some of these. You know, we kind of have some inside looks. We got some different uh, footage out there. And uh, we really try to do these to kind of keep the momentum going throughout the year during the ups and downs of all the different classes. And again, thanks again, Tyler. And we appreciate you watching.